Okay, well, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for um, hosting this for us. And um, I wanted to welcome everybody. And for those of you who don't know, uh, this is Mr. Levin from Problem Attic, and he is going to actually share some information uh, with us about the features and how to maximize using Problem Attic in the classroom. So, Mr. Levin, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and start. All right, right, will do. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me this morning. <clears throat> My understanding is that uh, Winston-Salem uh, Forsyth Schools uh, now uh, use Canvas, so I will show that link in just a little while in case some of you uh, dialed in to see how that works. For those of you seeing Problem Act for the first time, let me give you the, the quickest of introductions, and then I want to jump right in and, and start making um, some documents, uh, show you how to select questions and format them different ways. The quick introduction is that Problematic is a teacher tool. It's a large database of questions, probably the largest in the world. We don't know for sure, so we don't make that claim, but it's got uh, over 320,000 questions, so it's certainly a candidate for that, that uh, award. Uh, the questions, roughly speaking, are split uh, about two to one. About two thirds of the questions we republish, so they come from other sources. And the idea there is uh, we, we save you the trouble of having to go to a lot of different websites, pull down PDFs, copy and paste the text, try to reformat it, and so on. So we've, we've gone in and done that. We've pulled the questions out. we put them into uh, hopefully uh, what you'll find to be a nice organizational system. And uh, that part of the program is totally free. So uh, please let your colleagues around the district know. Uh, that's about over 200,000 questions. And uh, you can go in and let the program do the cutting and pasting and reuse those questions for different purposes. That's the second part of, uh, of the program that's very important. Uh, what we've tried to do is make all those questions reformatable so they don't just have to be used on tests. Uh, Problematic has different output options so that you can use the questions very nicely for regular instruction, both print or electronically. And then if your school does subscribe, uh, you, you get the remaining questions, which are original. We wrote those about another uh, 80,000 I think we're up to, uh, plus export and scoring options. But there's a huge amount you can do just by signing up. So please let other teachers in district know. Uh, there's already a lot of teachers in Winston-Salem for Scythe who are making use of the program. And so hopefully this webinar will uh, provide some information you can pass along uh, to get maximum use, uh, regardless of whether you subscribe, all right? So it's a teacher tool. And the idea is to go in there and make classroom materials of all different kinds, uh, remote, in class, um, online, in print, uh, et cetera. All right. So let me get more concrete now and do a quick little uh, run through. Uh, what you're looking at is the main select screen. Uh, these nine panels represent the sources of the questions. So that goes back to the first point I made about uh, we pull all these questions out of PDFs and make it so you can go in and pick what you want and reformat them and create documents that you like. So I'm going to jump into uh, just um, almost arbitrarily a uh, wonderful bank of questions uh, from uh, New York Regents exams. Now this is ostensibly a high school course in New York, but uh, it definitely goes down into middle school grades. And one reason I can say that is because we've organized things uh, not just by exams, but by topics. So you could go into, for example, the Algebra 1 uh, reorganization of the questions and, um, and then expand this table of contents. And you will see um, how we've broken down the questions into uh, pretty discrete little topics. So if you wanted, you could actually go in and see the exams themselves, which I've done right there. So here's, for example, Algebra 1 Common Core exams that have come out in New York. And you could pick questions from the individual exams, uh, more like or, or from standards, as you can see here. OK, uh, but more likely, uh, you know, if you're outside of that particular state where we publish the questions, uh, uh, you'll, you'll find the top of the organization um, the easiest uh, to use. So here, for example, let me go in and um, jump. I'm just drilling down right into a topic. And uh, this screen now shows the questions that go with that topic. And it is as simple as clicking the little Add button here. So if you want to use this question on a test, you just click the Add button. You can scroll up and down. And um, you can uh, pick questions at random at the very top. Using this add button here, you can just say how many you want, okay? And then you continue this process. This button over here to the left takes you back up, 
a level and you can go back down into a different topic, all right? And just continue uh, the process, all right? Now there's a couple little shortcuts I wanna show you. Uh, what I just illustrated is drilling, as you don't mind the expression, drilling down into the database and picking the exact uh, questions you want. If you want to um, uh, pick at random, uh, there's a very nice shortcut, okay? Uh, you can certainly go into the category and use this button, but at a higher level, you can just right click. So uh, this topic here called inequality simple, you can just right click on it. All right, so that's the big difference. Your usual left mouse button will take you into the category. If you right click, you'll see a little add problems fly out. You just say how many you want, okay? And you can do that at any level, which makes it a really neat shortcut. So I could have just right clicked on absolute value and inequalities, okay? and said how many I wanted here, and it would distribute them from underneath, all right? Or I could even go up to one of these tabs across the top, and do the same thing there. So for example, I could right click on geometry all the way up at the top, all right? Whose table of contents looks like this. Okay, so you can see it's pretty broad. And the higher up I click, the more broadly the questions will be distributed, all right? So anyway, long story short, I'm already up to 20 questions. You can do any combination you want of diving down into a database, picking questions individually, or picking them at random. And if you wanna pick them at random, you can use that right click trick, all right? And a really neat way to think about using that is uh, maybe pick two or three times the number of questions you think you might use, and then just cut out the ones you don't like as much, all right? So instead of building up your document problem by problem, you can over select and then cut down to your favorites, all right? It actually turns out to be a very uh, fast and efficient way of putting together a document. Now, the last point I'll make, and I'll come back and tell you more about the other content, um, is that you can mix and match all you like, all right? So uh, again, um, you, you know, we publish things that are ostensibly high school level, like ACT and ACT, um, SAT and ACT prep, but there's nothing wrong with using these in middle school grades if you wanna challenge your students, um, get them ready for like the um, PSAT, uh, same thing with academic competitions, uh, because they're all done uh, uh, topically, okay, as well as the original sources, you can go in and zero in on the kinds of things you want to integrate into your curriculum. So uh, definitely take advantage of the mixing and matching, pull from different sources of questions. Uh, we publish some very good middle school material from Illustre of Mathematics, release questions from Park and Smarter Balance from other states. I'll go in and give you a little tour of this in just a little while. But uh, do keep in mind, you can mix and match, all right? Now, one of the points I didn't make at the beginning, which I will do now um, to kind of emphasize it, is the general flow of the program. Uh, the tabs on the left more or less represent the flow. So if you just march down the tabs, you'll be in really good shape, okay? Start out by selecting what you want, make some arrangement and formatting decisions, and then just create your custom PDFs, okay, which you can either print or distribute to students electronically. If you're, uh, if you're logging in from a school that has a subscription, you can go on to the export and score tabs, but everybody can go all the way down through making PDFs, and you can see you get quite a lot of options, okay, uh, for, uh, for distributing the questions. All right, I'm gonna give my document a name now. I picked 20 questions, and I'll just call it um, uh, New York Regents Math Examples, okay? And uh, now I'm gonna move on. You can see what I got at random. I'm gonna click the Arrange tab. And this is literally where you can move questions around. That's how it got its name. So you can just drag and drop, uh, move questions into a different spot. You can get rid of ones that you don't want just by clicking the little red Go Away button. So that comes back to that point I was making about um, uh, cutting down the number of questions if you over, over select, all right? So right on the Arrange page, um, by default, you're in the grid view here, and it's a nice way to just hold down your mouse and move things to a different position. That's the rearranging. If these little thumbnails are too small to read the questions, you can just switch to list view here. You'll see the larger size version of them now, and you can drag and drop here as well, okay, just up and down. So the grid view is a little more efficient if you wanna do um, wholesale moving, all right? Now the last button here, and I'll come back and tell you more about it in a little while, called Details, lets you do something um, uh, really neat. If you click on a question, 
like um, oh, let's find one that um, uh, maybe could be uh, turned into free response. Oh, I don't have a great. Oh, here's a good one. Number nine. OK, so number nine is really not a question that needs to be multiple choice. Uh, you can see that the choices don't have to be there. It's a perfectly good free response question if those choices were just hidden. Well, there's a neat little shortcut and problem matter for doing that. If you just click on a question, okay, either in grid view or list view, click on a question number nine, or click on it over here in the little uh, tree, then you click the details button, you'll see an instant way to turn multiple choice into free response. And so you can think of these questions as doing double duty. You can certainly give them as multiple choice if that's what you want, or for those candidates which could be free response you just come here to details you say hide the choices and then if you like you can come over to the right and give students special answer spaces uh, to turn these in, into more task-like questions so uh, this question you might want to have students uh, answer on a number line so you could just choose number line you can specify the tick marks and you'll get a little number line below that question if this were not a math question, if it were science, O studies, ELA, you can put in uh, blank lines, you can put in little snippets of graph paper, um, you can put in a, a, a graph for plotting data, um, you could even use the graph paper for something like a graphic organizer. Okay, so um, uh, graph paper serves lots of purposes, purposes, uh, even if um, you're not using it strictly for graphing, and that would be done with a little box or grid. I'll come back later and. Um, and show you an example of that. All right, so that's the details button. And the last point I'll make before I leave this screen, um, just so you don't think this is too math centric, is this arrange page is also where you break a document up into parts. So if you want to have a multi-part document with different directions along the way, these questions are uh, worth one point each, you know, show your work for these free response questions, they're worth five points each, you would just use these buttons here to add and remove parts and you'll see the little uh, hierarchy get built here on the left, uh, basically the structure of your document. All right, so that's another purpose of the Arrange tab. Now moving on, the Format tab is probably where the first big surprises will uh, show up. Um, here is where I can really emphasize that point that uh, Problematic is not just a test generator. All right, now the default layout is a two column, uh, fairly common looking, uh, standardized test, but you don't have to deliver the questions that way. If you just notice these two little uh, triangle buttons uh, pointing left and right, you just click one and the document layout will change. You can do a layout with answer space on the right, just a one column layout, or if you loop around or go in the other direction, you'll notice, look at that, you can make overheads. One large problem formatted per page, you could use these with a whiteboard. You could send them into other programs that use slide-like layouts, okay? If you go uh, further, you can do uh, uh, two by one uh, flashcards uh, or uh, two by two, and the program will drop these questions right into that layout, and boom, you've got uh, cards ready to pass out, used for warm-ups, exit tickets, small group instruction, You'll all, you all are in the classroom, you know there's lots of uses for questions printed on cards, exit tickets, very popular nowadays, all right? And if you continue uh, even further, you'll see that you can make little calendars uh, with a problem of the day. A uh, really neat way to kind of do review, um, uh, spiral learning, uh, challenge, extra credit, etc. okay? I'll go ahead and start with that. And so that I don't waste this little square down to the bottom right, I'm gonna click the little uh, option here to call it a weekend problem. And then it'll put a problem in here, and I'll call it Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so that's your decision if you want to do that. So now I click the next tab down, make PDF, and there it is, my problem of the day calendar. Uh, you can see that it just continues on until it runs out of questions. So you could do a whole semester's worth. Just pick a couple hundred questions, cut it down to your 90 or 80 favorites, and you've got a weekly calendar for the entire rest of the school year, okay? Really easy to do, very fast, and um, nice way to get questions in the hands of students. By default, you always get an answer key at the back. If you are planning to send out this calendar as is, you know, you may want to include the answers. That's up to you. If you don't, you just go back to the format page and you turn off the answer key right here, all right? If you change your mind, you just come over to the right. You say, oh, you know what? I think I'll use these questions on flashcards instead. It's that simple. Change it to flashcards. 
go back to make PDF, and uh, here they are on cards. And you would just uh, download these, um, cut them apart. So here's the download button, print them, cut them apart. You've got games or activities, you know, ready to go that way. All right. Now there is actually an option in Problematic to duplicate the questions. So if you went back to the Arrange tab, you could um, uh, click uh, Duplicate on a question. And uh, the reason for that would be the following. Uh, you could actually make sheets of cards. Okay, so just imagine you duplicated this question four times, or three times rather, boom, 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 boom. Same question four in a row, same question four in a row, same question four in a row. You print those out, stack them up, put them on a cutting board, and you've got four equal decks of cards. So you can actually do some uh, pretty neat things very quickly uh, in, in the way of uh, small group instruction or game playing, okay? Uh, back to the format uh, tab one more time. Um, I won't bother to show you the uh, overhead layout. Oh, why not? It's easy to do. Uh, here, here's the overhead layout. And um, uh, as you can imagine, it's one large problem per page. Uh, you could uh, show these on a whiteboard. If you picked questions that could be converted to free response, you could hide the choices. Uh, you could actually do your work right up on the screen or for remote instruction, online learning. Um, you could use the drawing tools in your video conferencing software and actually write, uh, write on these. Uh, this overhead layout is also a good way to copy the questions if you want to paste them into another program that is slideshow-like. Um, you could use a screen capture. Um, here, I'll show you what I mean. I'm pulling them down as a PDF file, and I'll just open them right in my browser. Or rather, um, here they are in a, a fast, simple little uh, PDF viewer. So you can see I basically got a slideshow, okay? And I could capture these screens if I wanted and drop them into, say, a program like Nearpod or, or something like that, okay? So uh, there is a, a lot you can do with uh, one question per page. Uh, Problematic automatically uh, formats them to fit, so you don't have to worry about anything being too large. It will definitely be scaled down to uh, fit on the page, all right? And, and do keep in mind, you don't have to just use multiple choice, okay? There's a lot of good free response in the program, um, so don't be uh, put off if I happen to get uh, a lot of multiple choice uh, randomly here. Okay, so that's the overhead option. Back to format. Uh, this is a uh, more typical two-column layout. Lots of options here. You have control over the headers. Uh, I won't waste your time going through all the options. You have control over the fonts and the sizing. And then some of the more important ones are down here under multiple choice, um, in particular because uh, we do have a lot of multi-select questions. You can decide how you want to format those with little dingbat check marks uh, if you're going to uh, print or bubbles, or you can format them like multiple choice if you're using any kind of scoring system. And then a few other things just to keep in mind. You can match the format of your state uh, test almost certainly by fiddling with the uh, labeling style, bold, alternating. And um, if you're doing um, any kind of test accommodation, you can even uh, cut down the number of choices, all right? Uh, the last option that's pretty important here is this one that says hide multiple choice answers when possible. Basically what that does, if you check that option, is it, will go, uh, Problematic will go across the document and turn everything possible into free response. Now we have flagged the data, so we know when a question needs its choices, like which of the following is such and such, or which of these is the best summary of the reading passage or what have you, okay? We flag those so those choices won't get hidden by accident. But doing it here across the document uh, saves you the trouble of having to do it uh, individually here on the select on the arrange page okay so just keep in mind that on the format page you can do a very quick conversion to free response uh, as much as possible um, just by clicking the little um, button here and that's a great way to get away from multiple choice if, that, if that's your goal all right so uh, here's what the two column document looks like and um, uh, pops up on my screen and uh, if you're happy with it you could download it um, if you're planning to give it to students um, electronically as a uh, PDF, um, you don't even have to download it, okay? You can use this little button here, uh, share with students. And uh, this is a way uh, to give students just a link to the PDF. Uh, so again, it saves you the trouble of even downloading it. 
um, you can push it straight into Google Classroom. You could copy and paste this link into Canvas or any other program, all right? And then when students click this link, they pull down the PDF directly. So basically, that's treating Problematic like Dropbox or Google Drive. Problematic's just hosting it, all right? And all you have to do is publish this link instead of uh, downloading the PDF and then re-uploading it to one of those other programs, all right? So it's just a shortcut to doing essentially the same thing as uploading it up into the cloud uh, on your own, all right? Uh, now, one thing that's important to know, since I've introduced this option, is that's not a live link, all right? And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. This link here points to the document that you are looking at in the preview window, all right? If you update this document, it won't change what students are seeing. If you want to change what they're seeing, just click the green button again, and that will refresh the saved PDF. Now, the reason that matters is the following, just so you're aware of this. If you share this link with students, okay, and then you go back and you turn on the answer key for yourself, all right, you don't have to worry about um, uh, students seeing that uh, because it's not a live link, okay? So again, um, the answer key will now be turned on for you. There it is again. But you don't have to worry about students seeing that, all right? They're only gonna see what was shown here when you click the green button. So that's a little explanation I thought you ought to know about in case you're wondering, you know, how do I keep the uh, the answers from leaking out, all right? Okay, um, we are at a really good place for me to uh, pause. I wasn't looking over at chat. I hope I didn't miss anything. But if you wanna put in a chat message and ask a question about what I've shown so far, or if you want to unmute and uh, ask a question out loud, that's fine too. If somebody just wants to put in a message that says, uh, we're with you, uh, that's actually very helpful to know that I'm not just talking out into the ether. Um, so anyway, I'll pause for a bit here and see if anyone wants to ask about anything I've shown so far. Okay, um, now the reason that's a good stopping point is uh, anybody can do what I just showed you. All right, I, I, that's true, and I like to emphasize that uh, whenever I do a webinar because we got permission from a lot of these organizations to publish their questions as long as we made them available for free. So please do share this information with other people in your district. And uh, now let me give you a little bit more of a tour of the content so you realize it's, it's not uh, so heavily math-centric. Uh, we do publish uh, questions uh, for all core subject areas. We even, uh, from New York, uh, published some translations. One of them is pretty cool. I don't know if, if it your... Um, your magnet school, you teach Latin, but we actually do publish questions uh, that were released by New York for Latin courses. So these are all foreign language courses. Um, so the program does even go a bit beyond um, uh, the core subjects. Um, let me give you a quick tour. So in New York, I already showed you math. If you went into science, you'd see something kind of similar. Um, New York uh, ended their biology exams uh, in 2001, they switched to a living environment, which is actually good for you all because living environment's uh, probably a little bit closer to a middle school subject. Uh, same thing with earth science. Uh, so here you can see biology ended in 2001, you switched to the living environment. There was a little bit of overlap and then it continued right on up through next year, or through, through last year rather, okay? So that's the living environment exams organization. And you can always jump in there and you can actually see what one of these exams looks like in New York, okay? So here they are, nice little pictures, okay? And you could almost certainly use some of these in a middle school living environment curriculum. Uh, if you switch to topics, you'll see something kind of like what I showed you for math. Uh, we take all those questions from all those years of exams and we break them down into topics. So we save the trouble of having to search from exam to exam, all right? And that's true uh, with social studies as well for New York. Um, if I come over here to the left, um, you'll see all these other states whose questions we publish. Uh, New York gets its own panel uh, because there's so many questions. In fact, even, uh, I forgot to mention, we have their elementary and middle school questions as well. Uh, all four subjects are covered. You can see they go right up through grade eight. And um, here we do a standards and a test organization because we didn't feel there were quite enough questions to do um, discrete topics. But if you went into standards, for example, for science, you'll see in New York, um, they just do a elementary and intermediate breakdown with their standards, but this would be a nice place to poke around and uh, maybe find some neat original 
uh, questions for science benchmarking um, up through uh, grade eight, okay? If you go into the other states, you'll start to see a similar pattern, okay? If we have enough questions, we'll do a topical organization, we'll do a standards organization, if we have enough uh, standards assignments from the other states. But to give you an idea of the breadth of coverage, let me click the test tab, and you can think of the test tab, don't take it too literally, okay? It's just the best name we could come up with, but it's really source documents. That's the way to think about it. These could be curriculum samplers, um, they could be uh, release tests, they could be practice tests, they could be from teacher handbooks even in a few cases, like Connecticut uh, traditionally uh, put out uh, teacher handbooks. Um, I don't think they do it anymore, uh, but these were like curriculum samplers under a different name, okay? So that's, uh, you can see years and years of publishing of source documents from Connecticut. We have all of the North Carolina source documents going back about 20 years, okay? So you can see the old North Carolina samplers. Uh, right on up through uh, release tests in the last couple of years. So you can go right into these categories and uh, pick and choose questions that you want to reuse, all right? And that's true not just for math, but uh, also um, science, so studies in ELA. So here's the science questions uh, from North Carolina, all right? Again, right on up through uh, recent years of release questions. And I hope we got them all. If you find something that you know of that we didn't get, uh, just let us know. And then when we have enough questions, as I said, we'll uh, also do a, um, a standards-based organization, all right? And when we have a, a standards-based organization, uh, so let me go into, say, middle school physical science, we will um, actually show the standard here in a little tag, okay, right on the question, all right? And um, nowadays, these will typically be either uh, NGSS standards or Common Core, or if it's a very state-specific curriculum framework, uh, we'll show it uh, from the state, okay? So that might give you a little bit of guidance also in the picking and choosing questions. Uh, but you can see they look real nice and clean. We, I think we've done a good job clipping out uh, the images. Um, and you can think of problematic as just being a way to cut and paste, okay? Now, you will find it takes a little while to get to know what is in problematic. I mean, with 300,000 plus questions, you're gonna to wanna to spend a little bit of time browsing the database, going down into different kinds of organizations, tests, topics, standards, what have you, and kind of find the organizational system that works for you, all right? Um, don't overlook some of these, you know, off the beaten path uh, titles, the academic competitions. Uh, over here to the right, the IM, stands for Luster of Mathematics, a wonderful middle school curriculum for math, um, lots of great uh, pictures, uh, real interesting multi-step questions. Okay, so do be aware these are all in the problematic database, and we're just about to add elementary and high school questions from Luster of Mathematics. Here are release questions from the National uh, Consortia, uh, the, the former National <laughs> Consortia for uh, for testing. They're, they're kind of uh, falling apart a little bit. A lot of states have pulled out, but Smarter Balance was one of them. Park was one of them. You'll see they've got uh, math and ELA. And then in the New Jersey model curriculum, which is based on some of the new national standards that were coming out in 2012, 13, 14, uh, uh, it was a big project in New Jersey to publish questions to go along with the new standards. Uh, we've got those in here, including uh, for social studies, okay, Achieve the Core, another organization supporting Common Core. Um, I got their questions, and then um, uh, NAEP and TIMS. Uh, let's see what else. Um, now, if your school does have a subscription, these two panels here get opened up. Uh, these are all original questions, and because they're original, we have a lot more control over the organization and, um, and the structure of it. So these are original questions we wrote for Common Core. And let me just mention a couple things that we've done. Um, uh, one thing, obviously, is um, we organize them straight around the standards, okay? So there's no separate topical source standards organization. It's just dead on for the standards because we wrote them. That was their purpose, okay? A um, couple of uh, things to mention about the questions we wrote that are pretty important. Um, since we wrote them, we followed a couple of design principles. One is we always wrote two in a row that would be similar, okay? And you can kind of see it here, two in a row, two in a row, so on, okay? 
that pairing is very much on purpose. That's not an accident. That's not for just you know extra repetition. We did it so that you would have like a pre and a post test question or form A, form B ready to go. Okay, so it's a really interesting concept about our original questions. Um, uh, everything that we wrote um, that's original, we follow that principle of uh, two in a row being um, similar, you know, very similar, enough that you could give them to different students and still uh, test uh, fairly, okay? So the two in a row concept plays out through here, it plays out through here, not so much up here. It, it'll sort of be valid if you go into the topics because these states typically release enough questions that are similar enough that, you know, you'll get sort of a rough pairing, but down in here, um, you can count on it, okay? Now, the other thing um, worth mentioning, because it's sometimes overlooked, in addition to Common Core, we did something called a meta framework. And the reason for that is starting around four or five years ago, states were pulling out a Common Core, you know, for political reasons. Not typically differing that much, but we realized we can't continue on and do state-specific modules. There's just too many small differences, not even making it worth it. So what we did instead is something we call a meta framework. So if you're a math teacher, just please be aware of this because you might like it. What we did is we took all the state-aligned questions and we put them into a topical organization that we felt could work across states if we couldn't do a strict standards-based alignment for their state. And you may prefer this topical organization to the strict uh, Common Core organization, uh, which is here. It's the same questions, okay, but they're presented a little bit differently by topics instead of what are sometimes overly broad standards, okay? Similar idea over here to the right. This database is all different questions, okay? There's no overlap. Um, this database here is sometimes overlooked and it shouldn't be if you're a math teacher. Uh, these are textbook-like questions, all free response, no multiple choice at all. They're short answer, they're multi-step, they're short tasks, okay? And we did them to be kind of like the topics of a textbook, almost to replace a textbook, okay? So if you're looking for homework, little problem set-like questions, uh, you might want to poke around in pre-algebra, pre-calc. Um, they're uh, slightly more skill-oriented, just slightly, um, and, and they also follow the pairing. So you'll always have like in a, a pre and post test or a, a odds and evens from the old days and textbooks used to do it that way. You can think of them that way. Okay, so that's the pre-algebra, pre-calc database. And again, even ACT and SAT questions, uh, because they're done by topic, easy to mix into your regular curriculum. So don't overlook them. Um, they can be very good questions for um, teaching problem solving. All right, mix and match all you want from the different databases. Uh, let me say a a quick word about not math subjects. Um, selection is largely the same. You know, if you went into social studies, teach eighth grade U.S. history, okay, you would just go down into the U.S. history topics that pertain to your, your curriculum, and you would just pick questions the same way, okay? ELA is a little bit different because of reading passages, okay? And, and, I, could do, and, and I could do a follow-up session on just ELA if that's of interest to you. But ELA, we can't really do a topical breakdown, so you won't see it here under topics. Even a standards by standards breakdown gets a little bit tricky because the passages, uh, the questions are grouped by passage. And we found out it's fairly inefficient to split those up and have them in all different you know, um, parts of the database. So for ELA, at this time at least, um, you're only gonna find it under the source document organization. OK, but if you went into um, uh, ELA, say, for North uh, Carolina, and you just wanted to reuse some of the things that have uh, been put out by your state, OK, you could go into one of the released um, exams, like here, for example, it's 2008, grade 7. You can tell that because of the little 07 there, uh, reading samples. And um, here are the questions that went with it. Oh, let me teach you one last thing before I, I leave the... Um, uh, all the, the the database tour. It's this little panel right here. Okay, we call this a little navigation panel. And as I scroll down, you'll see it stays on the left, so it kind of follows you. It's it's sort of modeled after like a, um, a TV or VCR remote. Okay, and what it does is it saves you the trouble of having to click the go back button all the time, and uh, you know go back into another um, uh, category. Okay, and the reason it saves you that trouble. Uh, so here's the go back button, the same one is up here. Here's a button to go all the way back to the very top. It's these two buttons right here. 
they will take you to the next or previous category, which could be the next or previous exam or the next or previous standard without having to go up a level. So if I just click the right one here, I jump to the next uh, category released in North Carolina. And this little button is a very fast way to uh, skim through the database because it just keeps taking you on to the next um, source topic or uh, standard or uh, what have you, okay? All right, so uh, anyway, uh, be aware of this little panel here. These icons here, by the way, link you to the PDFs that give you, um, it lets you preview the reading passage, okay? Um, and if you just pick the questions, the reading passage comes in um, with the questions automatically, so you don't do anything special there, all right? So anyway, that's a very quick overview of ELA. Again, uh, if, if there's ELA teachers in this group, um, it might be good to schedule a whole separate session on just that because there's a lot of um, neat little tricks for ELA um, that are hard to cover in a, in a one hour session. I actually wanna move on and start showing export and scoring. Okay, so let's do a separate session if you want to uh, learn more about ELA and I'll show you things like uh, the reading passage collection. In fact, I'll give you a quick look at this in a moment. Um, and then also, um, uh, the part structure becomes very important for ELA so that you can put in directions like read this passage and answer questions 6 through 12, and et cetera. Okay, so that's why a separate session on ELA um, can be um, worth it. All right, but uh, in the interest of time, because we're already at about uh, 35 minutes, I want to now move on and show you uh, export and scoring after that little uh, tour of the database. All right, so I've got the same 16 questions right now uh, that I chose uh, before for math. And um, up to this point, I've just gone through make PDF. All right, but now I'm gonna click one more tab down and show you uh, some of the other things that you can do with those questions, all right? So um, uh, this is a subscription option. So I, I'm sorry about that if you're, if you're logged in from a school that doesn't have a subscription, maybe it'll be enough to um, uh, get you interested in it. You can see some additional things you can do. But uh, prior to that, uh, almost 100% of what I showed you is free, so do keep that in mind. Um, don't let this be a, um, you know, a, a disincentive to using the program, because you can get a lot of use out of the, uh, the free part. All right, on the Export tab, you'll see a whole bunch of options for different delivery methods, okay? And, um, you know, we could almost spend another whole hour session on just these. So I'm just going to give you a quick sort of summary of the different ways of delivering the questions. For the most part, you'll figure out the details, okay? So my goal in this session today will just to be to give you a, um, an overview and an idea of what you can do, okay, without going too far down into the weeds. One of the first and most important things, <clears throat> which is overlooked, and I want to make sure you know that you can do it, is that Problematic will build a slideshow. All right, this idea faded away a little bit after being very popular for about 10 years with clickers and when whiteboards, smart boards and everything started coming into schools in a big way is that all the rage were slideshow programs with scoring, okay? Well, we thought it was kind of worth reviving the idea a little bit because it's, it's really useful with student devices too, okay? So if you just click the slideshow button here, here's a link to it, okay? It's super easy to do, just go to export, click slideshow, okay? And then you just click this little button here and opens right in your browser. You don't even have to download it, okay? You get a simple little PowerPoint-like file, web hosted, so it's in your browser, a little navigation panel down here to the bottom, and you just click through the questions. This could be in video conferencing software online, or it could be in a classroom on a whiteboard, okay? And you could use it as a lesson, you could use it as a warm-up, exit ticket-like idea, uh, march through the uh, the questions, could be a lesson. But here's the important thing that I wanted to show is it's connected to scoring, okay? And there's a couple different ways to do that. One way is to use this little QR code icon at the bottom right. If you click that, it puts a QR code up on the screen, all right? And if students take a picture of that with their device, they get a little answer sheet right on their device. So they can be answering the questions, you can get, be getting you know, uh, feedback real time uh, from your students as you are showing the slideshow. Now, if they don't have a QR reader, no big deal. You can just go to the answer sheet option here and give them this link, all right? And here's what it would look like. So you could share it to your clipboard, okay? And then email to them, post it on the board, whatever. But here's what it looks like. 
So students would be seeing this on their device while you are showing the slideshow, all right? And uh, they'd be answering questions. I'm not gonna spend time trying to get the right answers. It's really simple. There's no class roster to upload. They just submit by their name, okay? So it's, it's zero fuss. You don't have to worry about passwords or logins or anything, okay? And um, they answer the questions. If it's free response, uh, they can just put in an answer and I'll show you how you can actually see that, okay? And when they're done, uh, they just hit submit, okay? So um, those answers come in here on the last tab called score. You can think of this is like a little teacher dashboard, okay? So that's me. I didn't do too well by guessing, all right? Um, we do a quick little class histogram. We do a problem by problem breakdown, so you can see how students did on each problem. And then a student by student breakdown. And what's neat here is you can hover and actually see their free response answers, all right? So I can actually, so, the, so it works fine with free response, okay? They just type in their answers and I can actually score those, okay? You can see what each student answered, all right, and then you can give it partial credit or um, uh, uh, just mark it correct or incorrect, okay? And as soon as you hit one of these buttons, it just goes on to the next student. So it's actually very fast um, to do manual scoring uh, in the program, all right? So um, that's a quick little look at our scoring, and it all came from just doing a, a slideshow, all right? Now, you can also do a full-on online test with Problematic, okay? Similar idea. You click the online test radio button, uh, here's what it looks like. Okay, similar idea, students would just put their name on it, but now the choices become clickable. Okay, just like a lot of online test programs. No, no big surprise here. If it's free response, there's a little edit field, all right? And then they just hit submit at the bottom. All right, so that's our online testing, okay? But many of you uh, will probably prefer to either create a Google quiz if you use Google Classroom or to send it to Canvas. So instead of spending a lot of time on our own online testing, uh, just be aware that it's in there if you just want a quick and simple, fast way to do it, all right? And again, it's zero fuss. Uh, you, you don't even have to worry about uploading a class roster. You just give students the link, collect results here under score, okay? And that's actually very important about how we organize these options. If you do anything up here in this top box, it's gonna be scored by Problematic, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you do anything down here, scored by another program, and uh, here's a reminder of that, okay? So you can actually create a Google quiz, all right? Um, it's very easy to do. Um, since your district adopted Canvas, I'm gonna skip it for now, unless somebody puts in a chat message and says you wanna see it. Um, if you just wanna learn on your own, uh, we have a really nice little video you can watch. It's just five minutes. You'll recognize the narrator's voice, and um, you can see how you create a Google quiz directly from Problematic. Okay, or I can demonstrate it here if somebody's interested. But I definitely wanted to show you the Canvas option because you're gonna find this to be a, uh, a great way to get questions into Canvas with very little fuss, okay? So here's how it works. You do everything the same way. Select what you want. You can go all the way up through making a PDF version of it and, and proofread it. Even make that available to students separately, okay? If, if they you have to do some kind of accommodation, you might wanna give them a PDF with very large font questions spread apart or whatever, okay? So you can definitely do a PDF that matches what you send to Canvas. But here's how it works, okay? It's a simple download and upload process. Uh, you, you click the export tab, you make sure Canvas is chosen here, you download the file, save it anywhere you want on your computer, okay? I'll just save in the default location, and then you switch to Canvas. Um, now I've already logged in, uh, to make it uh, fast. So I'm just gonna switch to my Canvas tab. I'll open a, a course. And uh, there's multiple ways to get it into Canvas, all right? So I'm just gonna show you one way. One way. Uh, apparently there's a way to pull it in as a resource. Apparently there's a way to pull it in uh, and right into Quizzes Next as a new style assessment, okay? But here's the way I've been showing for years. I think it's very fast and simple. Um, and um, um, it should be fine, okay? Uh, it's just about four clicks is all it is. You say import existing content, okay? And you choose the uh, file type, which will be really obvious because you downloaded a QTI zip file and you browse for it, all right? So uh, here is the one I just downloaded today. 
click import. That's it. So I think it was five clicks. All right. So I went to uh, import existing content. Um, it's queued right now. Canvas is probably under a little bit of stress being early morning. There it is. It's completed. OK, it usually takes only five or 10 seconds. so It's not a big deal. Uh, anyway, you come to this page. You choose the QTI zip. You browse for the file. You upload it. And that's it. It's ready to go. OK, so I'm going to switch over to quizzes now. And uh, Canvas uh, alphabetizes things, if I recall. So I'm going to find my uh, New York Regents, uh, where is it, math examples. It was this one right here. And I'll just preview it. And what you're going to see is that the questions are now Canvas questions. So Canvas is handling the multiple choice. All right. Um, you can do all of Canvas's. Um, you take advantage of all of Canvas's quiz options, like timing it. You get uh, student logins through Canvas. You get export to your gradebook program. You can do shuffling of questions and answers. Okay, it, it's a it's a Canvas quiz is what I want to emphasize. All right, but it's formatted by Problematic. This is a little trick we came up with to make sure the questions look good. Okay, so the questions are all pre-formatted, so you get nice-looking math. You get a consistent-looking font. I think you're going to find that it's a very nice looking quiz and 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 there was no fuss really to it okay the math looks real it's integrated into the text uh, students would just click the radio buttons so it works like a canvas quiz but everything is, is formatted very nicely and ready to go okay and then here's the canvas way of doing a, a free response answer okay so you would publish this quiz for your students they would take it through logging into canvas and then the results would come into canvas so again, I want to emphasize that point when I went and created it, is that don't look for the results here under score. If you do a Canvas quiz, uh, the scoring will be done by Canvas and the reporting will be done by Canvas, which is probably what you want. Okay, so no big deal there. All right, so um, I've now covered all of the tabs, okay, with kind of a, um, a quick overview. Uh, just to recap, um, you just follow the tabs, okay? If you have a subscription, you just click export to get these extra options that I showed. Uh, don't forget about the slideshow option, the answer sheets that go with it. If you wanna kind of do real-time presentation style, uh, style scoring, all right? Um, export to uh, uh, Canvas is down here. And then there's also a way to create a real Google quiz, which will look a lot like the Canvas quiz, okay? So that's why, um, I, I can skip those steps unless somebody uh, wants me to show it. All right, um, a good place to pause again. And then in the last uh, 10 or so minutes, um, I'm gonna wrap up with a, a little overview of how editing works, because some of you are almost certainly gonna want to write your own questions or modify the ones that we publish. Um, so I'll spend a little bit of time on editing. And I think also very quickly, I'm gonna bop into that uh, reading passage collection just to make sure that ELA teachers don't feel they got a, a short shrift here. All right, so if anybody wants to ask a question or guide me in a certain direction, I'll, I'll pause just a little bit longer. Okay. Well, in the interest of time, let me um, move on to just a couple of, of final topics. Um, one, I just wanted to make very quick mention of um, the reading passage collection, because I hinted at it before, and it can be very handy if you're an ELA teacher, okay? We discovered over time that publishing questions and having passages associated with them is not necessarily the best way to build up reading tests. So what we, we realized we could do instead is build a separate database of reading passages themselves and then link from those to the questions. And so here's how it works. You come down here to the reading passage collection. You can start by clicking the index. And this is a collection of all the passages that we publish in Problematic passages directly, okay? So you don't have to get at them through the questions. And in fact, we kind of turn that around a little bit. This has all the passages listed here. There's 1,800 of them. There's a filter if you want to narrow them down. You can click on um, uh, links, I mean, the headers at the top here and resort, okay? Um, so you can sort by word count, you can sort by genre, okay? And you can click the link over here uh, if you want a little preview of the passage uh, and read it, okay, I just downloaded a little PDF. So there's the passage if you want to read it first, okay. And then over here to the right, 
this number over here is a uh, link to uh, the questions that go with it, if you like it, okay? So this reading passage collection kind of inverts the selection process a little bit. Instead of going to the questions first, you can go to the reading passages first. There's 1,800 of them, so it's quite a nice library. And it's about to grow, actually, to about 2,400. We're adding some more of our own. Um, it's a very nice library of reading passages. And we went one step further. We also organize them thematically. So if you want a little group of passages to ask questions that synthesize uh, different pieces, uh, you can come into the themes, and you'll find little groups that we organized roughly the same reading level. Uh, you know, maybe a poem, maybe a narrative piece, maybe a nonfiction piece. Um, and so we group them so that you could do a little lesson on, on certain themes. Okay, so that's the reading passage collection. And again, my goal today is just to do kind of a grand tour. So just be aware that it's available. And I'll put a link up in uh, chat in just a few minutes uh, where you can, you can get all the details if you're interested in this. Okay, one other very quick thing before I wrap up with editing is there's another side of Promatic called the Organize page. I just want to make sure you're aware of it, okay? Which um, has a folder system, hence the name Organize. So you can build <clears throat> folders and drag and drop, you know, your documents into them if you just want to keep things organized. And over here to the right is the one other thing I just want to make sure you all know about, is if you do build a lot of documents that start to look like curriculum and you want to share them, you can come over here to the right, click this little three dot button, turn on sharing, and then just give teachers this link, and they can open up a copy of what you made. It's very safe, it won't hurt yours, but it's a nice way to do common benchmark assessments or to get uh, lessons that you put together you're proud of uh, into the hands of other teachers, okay? You can also share whole folders, but um, just by right-clicking, uh, but I won't get into that today, okay? So just be aware of this side of the program called Organize. Uh, might have some uh, options in there uh, that are useful to you, and it's all free. This whole part of the program called Organize is, is free as well, okay? So back to Create. Let me just spend the last five minutes or so on editing because there's going to be a couple of neat little discoveries here I want you all to make uh, so you can get uh, maximum use out of the program, okay? And again, given the time we have, I'm just going to kind of make it a, a real quick tour. Now, everything in the program is editable, okay? You can just click the little uh, pencil button, and you can go in and make any changes that you want, okay? There's just a few little things that we do differently that I want to make sure to point out to you. One of them is going to be this little box here uh, for multiple choice. So let me, let me explain that by writing a new question, okay? So here's the button to write a new question. And if I just click it, you'll see um, uh, it's, it's a, uh, you, you kind of get a blank slate. Um, but here's how a multiple choice question gets written, okay? Oops, typo. You just type the stem normally, uh, but watch, I'm not typing in letters, okay? You don't wanna do that, because if you hardwire in lettering, A, B, C, D, Promatic won't know what to do with the question. It won't be able to hide choices, it won't be able to export or score effectively, okay? So what you do instead is you communicate to Problematic what you're doing, okay? And you do it much like you would in a word processor. You, um, you highlight the choices, Okay, but like in a word processor, you have, you know, um, automatic labeling. Promatic, we just added um, some more options, okay? You just tell Promatic it's a block of multiple choice answers, okay? So that's where the yellow box came from. And then you right-click the uh, correct answer, and that's it, okay? It, it turns out it's actually faster, we learned, to do it this way than to have to tab into different fields for each choice, okay? So you just write your question normally, write your questions, nor, uh, your answers normally. Uh, if it's multi-select, it's just as easy. You highlight them, you come to the drop-down, you say it's a multi-select block, and then you can click more than one answer. Okay, so it's, it's that simple, all right? And they'll export properly and get scored properly as long as you tell Promatic what you're doing. Okay, the next quick lesson about the editor, which is not obvious, is that there's a huge, beautiful clip art library that goes with it. Okay, so just like we pulled out all the passages and organized them by topic and theme, we pull, pulled out all the images that go with Problematic's uh, database, and we organize them by topic. So if you like to write your own questions, you're going to love this library of images. Okay, it's called Stock Images. So let me repeat what I did there in case you missed the step. I clicked the little Insert Image icon here. 
you can certainly upload your own images, but take a look at these. If I go to the stock images, you'll see, for example, that we've organized all the science images. So I could go into earth science. I could go into, um, oh, let's do life science instead. Go into food webs and click on food webs pictures and look at this. These are all the food webs for all the questions in Problematic. And it's really simple to reuse one. You just click on it, say OK, comes right into your problem. And you've got stimulus. You've got you know, maybe something to write a new question. And um, um, it's that easy. Go to images, drill down into stock images. And for social studies, we've got timelines, newspaper headlines, maps, historical documents, uh, lots of political cartoons. OK, so uh, take advantage of that resource especially if you like to write your own questions, uh, you'll, you'll find it's a really good way you know, to get prompt stimulus. And then the last thing is there's a wonderful built-in equation editor, okay? And I'll just spend one minute on it and then I'll wrap things up, okay? Here's how it works. It's all on the keyboard, so it's super fast. You hit Control M to go into it, M for mathematics, okay? And I'll give you some documentation on this so you don't have to try to remember all the tricks. And then you just type. And it's a lot like the Desmos calculator, if you're familiar with that. So you use an up caret or circumflex to get an exponent. You hit space or tab when you're done with something. So I just hit space to indicate I'm done with the exponent. And then you just continue on, okay? So this easily, I can do a quadratic equation. I can even put in a fraction. Here's a fraction, 2 thirds. 2 slash 3, space bar, because I'm done. Okay, so I just did a fraction live right on the keyboard equals negative five, okay? Hit control M when you're done and just keep typing, okay? So that's how easily you can do math. And what's really neat about it is everything common is supported. You just have to learn a little bit more about it and I'll point you in direction as to how to do that. For anything not on your keyboard, you just give a command. It starts with a backslash and then it's just the name. So there's a pi symbol. Here's an alpha. Oops, you have to spell it right, okay? Here's a square root. Simple as backslash R, you're inside the square root, you just type, okay? You can even do geometry. Here's A ray, uh, a ray AB is perpendicular to segment uh, CD, okay? All uh, right on the keyboard. It'll look beautiful, it's fast, and it may sound immodest, but I don't think you're gonna find a better way uh, to do math on the computer. Uh, we're very proud of um, this little inline uh, editor that we came up with. All right, so do keep that in mind if you're a math or science teacher and maybe occasionally in social studies to throw in a formula for something, um, it'll be a really easy way to do it. All right, so there's your little tour of the editor. Um, you can edit questions with the pencil. You can write your own. You can edit as you pick. You just go into a, um, uh, a uh, topic and here's a little edit button here. So as you're browsing the database, you see a question you wanna reword a little bit. Just click the edit button as you go, and that edited version is what will come into your document. All right, so editing works uh, all over the place. All right, um, I hit the one hour mark. I went a couple of minutes over. I apologize for that. Um, a couple of you did mention, you know, images not showing up. Um, but please send an email to our support address. I'm put, I'll go ahead and put it in chat, and we will um, uh, uh, do our best to uh, to troubleshoot it. There's our email address. I just put it in. And early on in the session, at the very beginning, I put in this uh, web link. Uh, this is a page. You might want to bookmark it. Problematic.com slash more info. This has links to documentation for everything I've shown today. Okay. So it'll have the, um, the video for exporting your Google quiz if you want to um, see how that works. Reminder of how to get into Canvas, uh, the questions. Uh, here's uh, more information about the reading passage collection, uh, graphics library, the live math editor. You know, basically um, what I've shown you today, okay, is, is on this one page. So uh, do keep this in mind. Um, um, if you want to dig a little bit deeper, get a little uh, review of what I went over. And with that, I will stop talking. Um, if any of you have questions, you want to stay online and ask me uh, anything, I can go a little bit deeper. Uh, so we'll have a little uh, Q&A session here if you like. If you have to go, thanks a lot for your time. Um, hope uh, this helps a lot. You get a lot of good use out of Problematic, and uh, we uh, appreciate your signing up and your school support. Um, 
if uh, if you're one of our subscribers. So um, um, good luck everyone with the rest of the school year, and um, I'm staying on here if you want to ask any questions.